Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Samarth. I'm a fourth year graduate student working for uh, Professor Eli Yelbinovich. Uh, what I'm here to talk to you about is this picture right here. Uh, it's, this is a photo from 1956. This is one of the first commercial hard drives that were ever made. It was made by IBM. Uh, what's amazing about this is this was actually kind of popular in its day in terms of data storage. And it offered an amazing five megabytes worth of data. It, caught, it weighed 2,000 pounds because it was basically this box just completely full of iron. It had 15 gigantic iron disks in it to contain the five megabytes of data. And it costed on least $3,000 a month. Uh, luckily for us, though, uh, data storage has followed uh, pretty much the same Moore's law that we see with transistors and computing chips. Uh, usually, people don't show these plots for data storage, but it has done the same thing. So you look over time, the amount of gigabytes we can put in a hard drive has grown exponentially over time. And similarly, the cost per gigabyte has shrank exponentially over time. And we can look to see how we do this on, a, on a, today's uh, sort of hard drives. If you zoom in, zoom in on a hard drive, you have this disk, which on the surface of it has trillions of tiny magnets. Each magnet, like any normal magnet that we might play with, has a north and south pole uh, that defines a polarity. And whether that north and south pole is pointing upwards or downwards defines whether you have a digital zero or one. And if you look at this disk, the way we access data, I mean, all the data is on this giant, uh, is on this disk, and there's no electrical connectivity to any one bit. Uh, we access everything mechanically. Uh, so the disk spins uh, very quickly. Uh, normal hard drives spin around 7,000 RPM, and there's a mechanical spindle, an arm, uh, which is shown here on the left, uh, that can select a particular ring of data that's on the hard drive. Uh, and on the very tip of that mechanical arm is an electromagnet. Um, and using electromagnets, we can read and write data uh, to the disk. Uh, it's really amazing how far we've gone mechanically just in order to access all the information on our hard drive. To give you an idea, uh, the hard drive is moving at about 10 meters per second, and the electromagnet is basically flying above the hard drive. Um, I mean, in reality, the electromagnet is actually mounted on a wing, so it literally is flying above. And it's hovering at um, a very small distance, at two nanometers above the hard drive. It's a very mechanically stable system. Uh, to give you an idea of what that is you know, in real life, that's equivalent to engineering a 747 that can fly at full speed, 600 miles per hour, and hovering exactly 50 nanometers above the ground. That's like the amount of mechanical stability that exists in today's hard drives. And as you can imagine, this is really hard to scale. We're at two nanometers above the hard drive right now, flying you know, essentially relatively as fast as a 747. Uh, you really can't shrink that anymore. Two nanometers is equivalent to 20 atoms of room between the electromagnet and the hard drive. So there's not a lot of room there. So what we're trying to do next, uh, the latest technology that everyone in the magnetic data storage industry is trying to go after is heat-assisted magnetic recording. I won't go through all the physics, but essentially we want to integrate lasers onto normal magnetic hard drives. And if we can focus a laser beam onto one bit of information, we can both increase the speed of the hard drive as well as increase aerial density. And this would allow us to, scare, uh, to scale for quite a while. Uh, this picture right here is from Scientific American, and it shows an electromagnet, a laser beam, and you can see the laser beam heating up like one little box, which is supposed to be one bit. Uh, unfortunately, Scientific American wasn't so scientific when they made this. So the laser beam that's shown at the top is about 10,000 nanometers wide. Uh, the best you can do focusing light with lenses is the diffraction limit. That's a physical limit. So for our uh, wavelengths of light that we're using, that's about 200 nanometers. Whereas in a state-of-the-art hard drive, a bit is approximately 20 by 20 nanometers. It's way smaller than you can ever focus light with any conventional optics. And this is what I do for research. Is I'm trying to figure out how to focus light down to a much smaller size, something way smaller than the wavelength. And we need to do this for $1, because it needs to go into a hard drive that you know, we make tens of millions of a year. Um, and the, the big technology that we're trying to use uh, to do this are antennas. Uh, very, very small antennas. So instead of an antenna being resonant at a radio wavelength, uh, you know, say centimeters, meters, uh, these are antennas that are resonant at the light wavelength, uh, which in our case is about 800 nanometers. So all of our antennas that we're making, they're uh, very thin, uh, very tiny, thin films of gold, say about 50 nanometers uh, film of gold. And uh, you know, to, in order to be resonant at light wavelengths, uh, they have to be sized to about uh, two to 400 nanometers. Uh, so we, we're trying to make these very small antennas, and this will allow us to capture a lot of light from our laser and then focus it to the tip of the antenna. 
which if you think about radio uh, wave antennas, that's essentially what they do. They're capturing radiation that, are, that is very large and it's capable of focusing it to a very small wire. The thickness of a wire is much, much smaller than the wavelength. And that's kind of something similar to what we're doing, but at optical frequencies. And uh, this could be useful for data storage as well as spectroscopy, because we can focus light to very small spots. So you can have a microscope that can look at very small things. Um, and I spend most of my time uh, trying to optimize the shapes of these antennas. Uh, the one difference between optical antennas and radio wave antennas are that the material properties are very different. So the shapes of antennas that are resonant are, are much different. So nothing looks like a normal uh, half-wave dipole or yagi antenna that you might see on your roof. Uh, there are all these weird kind of shapes over here. I call this one an armchair antenna. That's the new technical name I'm going to try to go after. Uh, this whole technology, uh, I'm working with uh, Western Digital and Seagate, and they're hoping that heat-assisted magnetic recording with optical antennas uh, should be commercial in about two to three years. Uh, this really is the, the next thing that they're trying to include in their, um, you know, in their por portfolio. All right, thank you. I'll be here during lunch if anyone wants to talk any more about what we do.